Assalamualaikum. So um, let's see how the students view um the the lesson that we have uh, put up just now. So Bismillah. Let's see whether this works or not. So I'm currently on my profile. Uh, I'm switching role to the students so that you will be able to see what um the student will see on that lesson. So we'll go straight down to the lesson um yeah we are on this lesson lesson on a child with epistaxis so um those are the objectives of the lesson um no i'll start on the first page so the first page a six-year-old boy with learning disability was brought by the parents to the ENT clinic with nasal obstruction associated with epistaxis. Are you ready to start? So the student click there. And then, alright, so these are the history page. So the student is supposed to choose the relevant history in this case. So um, let's say I'm the student. Um, Let's choose from all these questions. So if I'm thinking that the six-year-old boy has got probably um, nasal obstruction associated with epistaxis, common problems, maybe foreign body of the nose or um, allergy rhinitis with traumatic bleeding from the littles area. Um, but there's no history of sneezing, itchiness, or rhinorrhea, which are typical of allergy rhinitis. So maybe if I were to guess, I'd say, okay, maybe is there nasal itchiness? Mm, mm, yeah, it's important to see whether the symptoms are unilateral or bilateral. Um, nasal obstruction and epistaxis in a six-year-old boy. Next, spellings, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Uh, if I'm a mediocre student, I would say that um, it's less common in, in a child, but actually it is. So, maybe I won't take that. How severe is the bleeding? Yeah, that's common. That needs to be asked. So, I'll sub I'm submitting this quest these answers. So, um, so the, the, the prompt says that you have answered incorrectly. Would you like to attempt the question again? So that means some of the questions are answered incorrectly. So my answers were, are the symptoms unilateral or bilateral? And I've put in response, this one I've keyed in for the students. So unilateral nasal obstruction and epistaxis is a typical history in a benign or malignant nasal mass as well as in cases of foreign body. In cases of allergy rhinitis, nasal obstruction is bilateral and intermittent, while the epistaxis can be bilateral in traumatic bleeds. Okay, so if the student um, managed to get this answer correct, so the student will be able to see this response. Yeah? So now the student answered nasal itchiness, but my response was. Nasal itchiness, sneezing in rhinorrhea are cardinal symptoms of allergy rhinitis. However, young children will rarely complain of nasal itchiness, more so if the child has learning disability. So the student would then it would then trigger the students to think that oh I he or she may not have read the um, scenario completely. Yeah? So uh, may have missed that history of learning disability. Yeah, which was mentioned in the scenario earlier on. So the presence or absence of the nasal itchiness symptom may be less significant in this case. And then the student would be able to think that, oh, maybe the history of nasal itchiness is not that relevant in this case. So how severe is the bleeding? Does it stop spontaneously? Is it associated with passing of blood clots through the nostril? And so the response tells you that this is a the correct um, response. So um, this is a very relevant question. Severe bleeding is seen in cases of juvenile angiofibroma, while in traumatic epistaxis, malignant tumors and foreign body, the epistaxis is rarely associated with clots and usually sp stops spontaneously. So if, if the student were to read the answer and the response given on the first attempt, the student um, is being taught how to think correctly and um, now the student will answer again so yes i'd like to try again so 
So the student then reads again, a six-year-old boy with learning disability brought to the parents with nasal obstruction associated with epistaxis. Choose the relevant history. So are the symptoms unilateral or bilateral? Yes. How severe is the bleeding? Does it stop spontaneously? Is it associated with passing of blood clots and through or through the nostril? Yes. Is there any neck swelling? Now, the student feels, okay, maybe I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> now, the student will not answer nasal itchiness or difficulty in feeding as it's too far away. Then you can just click submit. And the answer, the response is not quite. So, now the students know that, okay, he or she may have missed one history. Yeah? Okay, now the student knows that the student is missing one more point because the answer that was given just now was not quite right. So now he or she will then tick the previous um, answers and then try to think carefully. So with now with the history, with the neck swelling, um, nasal itchiness, feeding probably less important, neck swelling probably yes now the student think that okay maybe malignant um, tumors of the uh, nasal cavity can cause metastasis to the neck nodes uh, causing cervical lymphadenopathy and then the student submits and now the answer is correct yeah so now the student knows that these answers are correct and the student is now allowed to continue to the um, next phase of the uh, lesson.